Can a rich person get into heaven? Can a rich person get... You know, that's a question that in Jesus' time would have baffled a lot of people. A lot of people would have said, well, of course a rich person is going to get into heaven. If they're rich, it's because God has blessed them. If God has blessed them, then he obviously cares for them. If God cares for the person, then how would they not get into heaven? And that's why a lot of Jesus' teaching on wealth and poverty was profoundly countercultural. That's why when he spent his time hanging out with the uh, poor and the marginalised of society, people like prostitutes, that's not a wealthy person's profession, um, um, uh, he was uh, he was criticised, often vilified for it, partly because of the moral dimension, but partly as well because of the uh, financial economic dimension. Though, of course, not uniquely so. He also hung out with tax collectors, some of whom did make a lot of money. Zacchaeus, we know, was a very wealthy man. Though when he became a Christian, he gave up uh, his uh, uh, profession of uh, cheating people and also gave away generously from uh, what he had left after he paid people back. This question of poverty and wealth, before we hear Jesus's answer, we've got to make ourselves ready to obey whatever he says. If I'm a rich person and I'm hoping that Jesus is going to say that I'm okay as I am, then I'm already halfway to wanting to interpret Jesus's words in a particular way. and He might not want me to do that. This week we're looking at the Beatitudes, these sayings of Jesus in Matthew chapter 5. It's at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, each one beginning with the word blessed. And the first of them all is here for us in Matthew chapter 5 verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's really important, isn't it, that it's the first of the Beatitudes before talking about any other qualities or conditions of life. Jesus uses the word poor. And yes, he does qualify it by saying poor in spirit. But the fact that he starts with even just the words blessed are the poor is a very significant thing. Wealthy people beware. It's almost as though he's saying, you know, if you're wealthy, dare yourself to call yourself blessed. Given that I've just said the poor are blessed. Uh, Luke, in his gospel, also records a selection of Beatitudes. They're slightly different from Matthew. And he doesn't include the words in spirit. He just says, blessed is the poor. Blessed are the poor. We know from uh, Jesus' teaching elsewhere that he said it was harder for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven. Uh, when he met the rich young man, he challenged him to sell everything he had and give his money away because he felt that that was getting in the way of this man having a relationship with God. And therefore, if you're wealthy, and I guess all of us, if we are living in Bromley, if we are living in our society, if we've got a certain amount of income coming in, I mean, you might be one of the poorest people in Bromley. Uh, uh, and if so, you're still wealthier than a good proportion of people living in the world today. Sorry to say that to you. Uh, if you're not one of the poorest in Bromley, and I'm not, uh, then I guess we need to say to ourselves, we are among the super rich of the world. So we need to pay special attention to what Jesus says. Blessed are the poor in spirit, but for this is the kingdom of heaven. Heaven belongs to people who are poor in spirit. Now, what does that mean? Elsewhere, Jesus makes it clear that our dependence on him is the number one prerequisite for receiving what he has to offer. When we come to Jesus and we say, look at all the good things I've got for you, that's when he basically switches off, says, I'm not interested. Remember the parable of the uh, uh, tax collector and the Pharisee. The Pharisee said to God in his prayer, look at all these great things I've got going for me. I'm better than anyone else. I'm certainly better than that tax collector over there. The tax collector said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus said his prayer was answered and the others wasn't. Our dependence on Jesus. Am I poor in spirit? If I am poor in spirit, then I'm not going to come to God and say, look at the great wealth of spiritual goods I've got to, to show. Look how uh, uh, moral I am. Look how religious I am. You ought to be impressed. The person who's poor in spirit comes to God and says, in the words of that tremendous old hymn, nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. That is, I'm not relying on myself for a place in heaven, but only on the mercy of God. Uh, that's what it means to be poor in spirit. And Jesus says to such people belongs the kingdom of heaven. Well, what does that mean for our wealth? The answer is that it doesn't mean a great deal for our wealth. It's talking about our attitude to God. However, 
If I read that and interpret it in that way and say to myself, oh, in that case, it means I don't need to do anything about my wealth. I can stay as wealthy as I was before. Then actually, I've totally missed it. Because when I depend on Jesus and him alone, it means that I look at my wealth and say, well, if I really am depending on him, then I can stop depending on my money. I can stop saying to myself that my life's going to be secure for a long time to come because after all, I've got all this wealth. If I'm, at, if I'm really depending on him, then some of the things that I surround myself with me could be let go, could be shared with others, could be shared with people who are materially poor and who actually would really use that much better than I would. Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus' teaching in the Sermon on the Mount. And thank you that he assures that the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are poor in spirit. We are sorry for all the times that we have felt ourselves to be spiritually rich, as though we have something good to offer you, when all good things come from you and all we have are filthy rags. May our position be that of the, of the uh, hymn writer who said, Nothing in my hands I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. And as we consider issues of poverty and wealth, please convict us with the need to share our good things materially with those who are poor, recognising that all good things come from you and you are the one who gives us the responsibility and the privilege of sharing with those who don't have. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Hope you have a blessed day. Come back tomorrow.